Now I will get personal. One of the main reasons why I actually left Italy was because judging other people for the way they look or what they eat. How long is your lunch break? And you're break. also having some wine. Oh, some wine, yeah, it just like gets me through the day. To me it's kind of... Hi curious friends, it's Vasi. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. On this channel I help you if you're planning to visit or move to London, but we also like talking about cultural differences like we will do today. Because when I ask you what would you like to see more on here, most of you said cultural differences, so here we are. We're comparing everyday life in Italy versus the UK. I actually used to live in Italy for almost four years and and I'm currently in London. And because I can read minds, I know exactly what you're thinking right now. Why am I talking about this? Am I Italian? No. Am I British? No. Am I getting things wrong in this video? Most probably. Comment down below if you agree or disagree with me on any of these points. Let's start with food and eating habits. I'm so sure you saw this coming. Also because I'm quite hungry. In Italy, food is like a religion. It needs respect and it needs time and appreciation. And I have a nice story for you. One of the first times when I went to Italy, I lived in an Italian family for almost a month and every single day the dad used to come back from work and have lunch with his family for at least an hour and after that have coffee and have all his lunch break for almost two hours. And this was in the south of Italy and there it's quite normal still to do that, which I swear I have literally never seen anything like that in the UK. Meals during the weekend or in the evening are even more important because having dinner is the time when families usually gather around the table and they talk and they spend time together. Whereas in the UK it's not really like that. It's normal to have lunch in front of your desk if you're at work or it's also okay if you come back from work and you have dinner on your own because you're hungry or you're busy after that. Did I mention that it's okay to eat in your bed? Meeting new people and also greeting friends. This one is quite fun. Hi, nice Hi, to meet I'm you. Ben. Oh. Oh, a kiss? Hi guys, it's Georgi Vasi. And in case you didn't get it from my bad sketch in there, I meant that British people are not so used to having two kisses on the cheeks whenever they meet someone, especially strangers. Personal space and touching. Hi, where are you from? Hi, I'm from Italy and I just moved here recently. I'm from Brighton. Brighton, are you so nice? And what you should pay attention in this conversation of two strangers is how touchy is our Italian and how uncomfortable I feel the me, the fake British person. You have to let me know, are you enjoying these videos about cultural differences? If so, let me know in the comments down below because I'm thinking of making a whole series for drinking culture. And to be honest with you, this is where I see one of the biggest differences. Let me just hit you up first with a fun fact. As someone that has heard your previous fun facts, I'm getting the feeling that this one is not going to be really fun as well, but let's hear it. British people drink 11.4 liters of alcohol every single year, and this is an average British person, whereas an average Italian person drinks only 7.5 liters of alcohol every single year. When you visit those countries, it's actually very obvious that the way in which they drink is different. Here in the UK, Okay, from what I have seen is that when people go to the pub and they say let's go for a pint of beer it's never really only one pint of beer you guys why you don't eat at pubs please let me know because I always end up being super starving after going to the pub what happens usually in Italy is that you would go for an aperitivo with your friends to have a glass of wine or a cocktail while having some food and the main purpose is not so much the food or the alcohol, it's more of uh, socializing and spending time with your friends. Now I will get 
personal. One of the main reasons why I actually left Italy was because of the working culture in there. I saw so many things that actually scared me. It is quite common for someone up to the age of 30 years old to be doing an internship and even though many times their roles advertised as internships, they actually ask you to do a regular job. In the UK, I would say that things here are a lot better organized, you know, from the very beginning, what are your benefits, what is, uh, okay, of course, your salary, how many days off you get, and of course, what exactly are your tasks on an everyday basis. Oh, I just landed in Italy. I'm loving my little holiday in here. Wait, really? Now? What? It's October, you know, like, do you have ferry in October? It's ferry, and no, I have 25 days off and I can take them whenever I want. Oh, that's convenient. But I guess you're also on a holiday. It's Monday, it's uh, 1 p.m. and you're at a restaurant. Okay, so the raw eggs in the plate means that you're in a restaurant. Interesting. No, I'm just having my lunch break. How long is your lunch break? Oh, uh... What was that? Let's hear it again. Oh, uh, around, around, around an hour, you know, like... And you're right? also having some wine. Oh, some wine, yeah, it's like gets me through the day. Cheers. And guys, if you want to see more fun and informative content about London or also other cultures, don't forget to subscribe. Perception of time and organization. You guys, when I was in Italy, my car had got blocked and they told me that it will take only two to three days for it to get unblocked, but it turned out that it took more than two weeks, also multiple calls. Every timeline that they give you at least double the time so you get a realistic understanding of how long it will take. And for you guys visiting Italy, you should definitely have a lot more patience with trains, at your hotel or at the restaurant and just be prepared that things will take longer than what you're used to. Whereas in the UK, when they give you a date of when something should be done, it's more like the last date in which it would have happened. But it's very likely that it would actually get done and resolved before that and I totally love the UK for that. Number seven, politeness. Here our British and Italian strangers. Oh I'm so sorry, really sorry to disturb you. Oh my god she didn't explain to you properly anything again and I'm so disappointed. But guys do you see how nice and polite British people are? Even if it's not their they will always be so kind and nice to you. Number eight, recycling. You guys, if you haven't been to any of the two countries and I ask you in which one do you think people recycle more, what would you tell me? Pretty sure that your answer would be the UK and this is also what I expected as well, but I was actually very surprised to see with my own eyes that people here in London at least don't recycle as much as they do in Italy. How crazy is that? Like, seriously, UK, I expected a lot more from you. I just want you to know that, so I hope you fix your recycling issue. And as you can imagine, the uh, issue is something that is now the government's top priority. We have like this super big thing in where you just open it, you throw your trash in there and you're done. The way in which it works in Italy is that every building on the ground floor has different recycling bins and there you have to put paper, glass, plastic. You literally cannot mix them because otherwise you get a fine and they're actually pretty strict with it. Number nine, friends and friendships. How people actually spend a lot of time with their friends. And it's quite common to see friends spending weekends together, hanging out and just doing everything together, which is quite cute, I have to say, but at the same time, it's also a little bit unproductive. They also tend to be friends with people that they know from middle school or high school or sometimes even elementary school, which to me it's kind of you guys, how can you still be friends with those people? I can barely even remember the names of the people I went to elementary school with. And about the UK, I found out that 
on an average, British people have 2.6 close friends, which makes them the nation with one of the least close friends. Because they have less friends, they're also closer with them. You guys, if you're from the UK, let me know how much time do you usually spend with your friends. Number 10, self-expression and just freedom of doing what you like. Italians actually quite enjoy judging other people for the way they look or what they eat. Whereas here in the UK and especially in London, I feel like even if I'm going on the street half naked or dressed in a super crazy way, just jumping around naked, no one would like even care. If you enjoyed this video, go check out this video that I made about the most interesting things about Italy and Italian culture. Love you all! Bye!